In the classical view, the diagnostic markers of B12 deficiency came to be the hematological signs of pernicious anemia, PA. These are macrocytosis, abnormally enlarged red blood cells, other blood cell abnormalities, and signs of an autoimmune attack in the blood. Although PA was known to be accompanied by neurological and neuropsychiatric signs and symptoms, these were not given foremost importance. They were not viewed as indicators of B12 deficiency if present without macrocytosis, anti-gastric parietal cell antibodies, or anti-intrinsic factor antibodies. However, the early literature documenting this type of anemia had described its neurological and psychiatric associations in the early 20th century. This connection with anemia has persisted in traditional methods of diagnosis, even though it has become clear that B12 deficiency has many other symptoms, and may not be accompanied by anemia at all. The criteria for diagnosis of B12 deficiency, developed out of the diagnosis of PA, are still commonly found in standard guidelines. For example, anemia, B12 and folate deficiency, vitamin B12 or folate deficiency anemia, and megaloblastic anemias. These are known as the Addisonian criteria, named after British physician Thomas Addison, who was credited with the first description of PA in 1849 before it was given the name pernicious anemia, which was identified as fatal. These criteria have various drawbacks, and are a complicated diagnostic method that often leads to a misdiagnosis of B12 deficiency, or an absence of a diagnosis for B12 deficiency. Not only is the Addisonian system complicated, but its main drawback is that it makes no allowance for patients presenting with neurological and neuropsychiatric symptoms without anemia. Unfortunately, there is plenty of evidence in the medical literature that this type of presentation is far more common than thought. In fact, there is often no evidence of either anemia or macrocytosis. Researchers have found a significant inverse correlation, opposite degrees, between the degree of anemia and the severity of neurological involvement. However, if either set of symptoms is left untreated, the patients will generally develop the other in due time. Dr. Ralph Green, an established authority on vitamin B12, says, it became clear that the effects of B12 deficiency were not restricted to the hematopoietic system but were often overshadowed by neurological complications and were sometimes entirely absent. Like folate deficiency is associated with effects beyond anemia, B12 deficiency is associated with non-hematological complications. A reason for this may be that vitamin B12 is implicated in two distinct metabolic pathways in the human body, one leading to hematopoiesis, the formation of blood cells, and one to the synthesis of myelin, the formation of myelin sheaths surrounding nerves. Many researchers have shown that anemia rarely occurs in B12 deficiency, and that a patient may be deficient despite having what is commonly described as a normal serum B12 level. In contrast, in the many cases they have encountered, neuropsychiatric and neurological signs and symptoms are far more prevalent and may be the only evidence of a deficiency state, which is confirmed through a therapeutic trial of B12. Modern research is increasingly confirming this finding. Moreover, there is now plenty of evidence to support this view. For example, in a classic study in 1988, researchers found that 28% of 141 patients had no anemia or macrocytosis, and yet clearly had neuropsychiatric signs of B12 deficiency. We conclude that neuropsychiatric disorders due to a B12 deficiency, occur commonly in the absence of anemia or an elevated MCV, mean cell volume, and that measurements of serum methamalonic acid and total homocysteine both before and after treatment, are useful in the diagnosis of these patients. Please pause the video and read this very important published paper on frequently reported misconceptions and misbeliefs regarding vitamin B12 deficiency. Ralph Green writes, although considered an old disease, new information is constantly accruing about B12 deficiency, the broad array of its effects, and methods for its diagnosis. B12 deficiency primarily affects the hematopoietic system, but its effects extend to other tissues and organs, most notably the nervous system. The spectrum of clinical presentations is broad so that diagnosis depends first on a high index of suspicion, and then on the judicious application of appropriate testing. This view is also reflected in the medical textbook, Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, cobalamin deficiency without hematologic abnormalities is surprisingly common, especially in the elderly. The risk of a non-hematologic presentation for B12 deficiency, 
is increased by folate food fortification because folate can mask the hematologic effects of B12 deficiency. Between 10 and 30% of persons over age 70 years have metabolic evidence of B12 deficiency. They either have elevated homocysteine levels, low transcobalamin 2 levels, or both. Only 10% of these patients have a defective production of intrinsic factor, the remainder often have atrophic gastritis and cannot release B12 from their food. Serum B12 levels may be normal or low. Still, serum levels of methylmalonic acid are almost invariably increased due to B12 deficiency at the tissue level. The neuropsychiatric abnormalities tend to improve, and serum methylmalonic acid levels generally return to normal after treatment with B12. However, neurologic defects do not always reverse with B12 supplementation. One of the challenges with B12 deficiency is that it can be masked by folate supplementation or fortification of some foods. Folate and B12 deficiencies can have similar hematologic symptoms. Folate supplementation can improve these symptoms in both cases. However, while folate supplementation can improve the anemia associated with B12 deficiency, it does not correct the underlying B12 deficiency. Therefore, if a person is supplemented with folate, their B12 deficiency may go undiagnosed and untreated, potentially leading to the non-hematologic symptoms mentioned earlier. Food fortification with folic acid, a synthetic form of folate, has been implemented in many countries as a public health intervention to prevent neural tube defects in newborns. However, this fortification can also increase the risk of undiagnosed and untreated B12 deficiency in individuals with low B12 status. In addition, the increased folate levels can mask the hematologic symptoms of B12 deficiency, leading to a delay in diagnosis and treatment. This delay can allow the neurological symptoms of B12 deficiency to become more severe before they are recognized and treated. Despite the increasing evidence emerging from medical research, still in recent years, health authorities frequently refuse prescriptions for vitamin B12 in patients with clinical signs of neuropathy, because the patients have no hematological sign, and their plasma vitamin B12 levels are reported as normal. This is especially worrying because Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine states, an important clinical problem is a non-anemic patient with neurologic or psychiatric abnormalities, and a low or borderline serum cobalamin level. In such patients, it is necessary to establish whether there is significant B12 deficiency. Thanks for watching.